All right, my good friends, how are you today? Aaron here bringing you your daily horoscope for Monday, the 11th of May, 2020. <sighs> what a beautiful day ahead. So yesterday I started talking about this beautiful septile um, connections between uh, Pluto up in Capricorn. And right, I'll show you. Pluto up in Capricorn. The North Node, which is now moved into Gemini, right? Not in Cancer anymore. We're, we're shifting our focus, okay, to a place of knowing, a place of knowledge, understanding. And there's only one way to get to that no, uh, the knowledge, the knowing, and understanding, and that's through communication, right? So we have this septile between the North Node here in Gemini, Uranus, Breakthrough, the Great Awakener, and Pluto, transformation, and then we follow Pluto down here to the North Node, okay? So these three are keeping this fate and destined connection, okay? Which means we're seeking knowledge, we're seeking great change in our lives, and we're allowing great transformation to come through. Furthermore, when we're dealing with these Earth signs, okay? Cardinal Capricorn and fixed sign Taurus. All right, the, these can be things, elements in our lives that we're that we just think are concrete. Like there's no changing this. You know, like this is just how I am, or that's just how they are. That's just who. That's just how it is, son. That's just how it is, daughter. That's just how it is, mom. Whatever you know. Um, we're going to learn in the next three months that is not the case, okay? Um, we have some serious, serious fate energy coming up that is destined to change our lives for the greater that's going to hit us hard this summer. 2020 is a serious year of growth transformation, okay? Um, <laughs> so this connection that's going on here in May um, with these three planets or, or these two planets in the North Node is going to last until June 3rd, all right? So this is not going anywhere. So it's making sure, again, Pluto takes 244 years, something like that, to go around the sun. It's ridiculously slow. And it stays on a certain degree for an elongated period of time. Why? Because it wants to make sure that we are truly creating the change and the space in our lives that we need. If it's healing that we want, then we create the space to heal. If it's receiving that we need, we're creating the space to receive. Okay? Whatever it is. And, and the fact that this is dealing primarily in Earth energy, the two big outer planets in Earth energy, this is dealing with practical, practicality, dealing with very real physicalities, okay? These are physical changes or, or, or uh, even with the North Node in Gemini, mental changes that affect us on a physical level, okay? So we can expect this really positive transformational energy to last through June. And I'm going to when I get the, the rest of these horoscopes out here, I'll show you what's coming. The, literally the same day that this connection ends, a new one picks back up between Neptune and Pluto and Neptune and Saturn that last until July. Okay, so this is fate. Fate and destiny. All right, you are a part of my fate. You are a part of my destiny. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that to you right now. Like that is real. This is we are in it. This isn't. This isn't. Oh, I wonder what's coming. You know, it's like no. We're this is this is it. We're in it. Right. So we can just continue to be ourselves, and all of these great things. You know, continue to go down our path and continue to learn and open up and extract knowledge. And, and, and the transformation, the breakthroughs are going to continue to come this summer, okay? Now, we've got the moon in Capricorn. That was a lot right off the gate. Uh, but what I'm saying is this energy is here to make a lasting impression, okay? A lasting impression on us. Now, today, besides the moon in Capricorn, I'll get there in a second. Uh, this is also the last day of Chiron in Aries, creating the septile to Mercury 
in Taurus. Okay, again, septiles are very, very powerful. This is the unseen energy that's flowing through everything. All right, the unseen sweeping hand of fate. Now, this is also Mercury's last day in Taurus. It is just ripping through, <laughs> you know, it was catching up to the sun. Um, now it's jumping into Gemini here to join Venus, to join the North Node uh, and continue our quest and thirst for knowledge. Okay, it's like leaving no stone unturned here. We must, you know, this is like Gemini. Gemini is um, witty, quick, fast thinking, quick on its toes. It's the ruling sign of Mercury, right? The messenger of the gods. The messenger of the gods is now in front of the sun, stealing the fire to give to humanity. All right, so we're getting these blessings. These gifts are continuously coming at us. Now, when Mercury comes home, Okay, things heat up, things spice up. Mercury's very happy. M Mercury's not in its favorite place in the fixed Earth sign of Taurus. Okay, it's slower. I, I mean, any of the fixed signs, you know, Mercury has a harder time with, and especially something like Taurus, where it's so it's stubborn. You know, it's so it's thick. All right, and again, it's just the ground under our feet. Think of like it like that. Taurus is this this stable, thick thing, and it's just like trying to juice cardboard i don't know why that's just the thing that came in my head it's just like ugh, you know you're not gonna uh, 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 get a lot out of that as far as the good the juice goes you know you got to get some strawberries or i don't know, terrible carrots um so so mercury's moving home to Gemini. Now, Mercury, not saying that Mercury's bad in, in Taurus, okay? There's a lot of things to learn in Taurus, you know, about being stable, about being practical, about being steady, you know, steady, not the roller coaster, okay? Mercury coming back home to Gemini is, is a bit of a roller coaster. It's fast, it's firing information, it's communication, super highway, okay? A lot of information. So today's the last day, Monday here. Uh, for that stable communication, the stableness, stable mind, stable mentality. I'm not saying it won't be stable when it moves into Gemini, but it's a different energy altogether. You'll feel it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's like we've been, you know, with, with the North Node in Cancer, when it was in Cancer, with Mercury, the Sun, in Taurus, they, they bedded, they aided each other, you know, in the sense of, well, I don't want to do anything drastic, <laughs> because I'm afraid to topple something over, or myself for that fact, right? That's Uranus' job. It's to topple everything over. It's like the tower card in tarot, right? It's just like, yeah, this has got to, this is, things got to change. You know, if we want success, if we want love, if we want whatever, we have to create change. We have to create that space. And again, thankfully, Pluto, Uranus, North Node now here in Gemini are creating that great change that we need. So we've been at a place where we're, we don't want to make waves. We want stability within ourselves, okay? And we have to remember that Uranus is the planet associated with, with Aquarius, okay? The rebel, the, the out-of-the-box, forward-thinking individual. And that's the kind of mentality that we need right now it's the out-of-the-box thinking that, that kind of saves us from a potential dark or um, very stuck. You know, we can be feeling very alone right now. We can be stuck in our emotions, in our mind. We can be stuck. You know, fixed earth sign Taurus has that stuck kind of energy. Okay, so we're moving on. Moving on, new ground coming Tuesday. So today's the last day for this, all right? As well, today's the last day that Venus is stationed retrograde. Or, or uh, um, that Venus is moving forward Tuesday. It's going to station retrograde, I'll show you. Let me just go click a day. Boop. Okay, now we see that little S right there. All right, now Mercury jumped into Gemini. Venus station retrograde. Okay, so that means Venus is going to start moving back. We're going to talk about that a lot more in depth. Um, I'm going to do a whole Venus retrograde in Gemini video. Okay, so we're going to talk more about that in the next day or two. Um, let me come back here because now let's get up to the moon. All right, 
last couple days as well on the 13th mars is going to move out of aquarius okay mars likes to be up here mars loves being up here mars loves capricorn it's getting stuff done it's saying yes i'm going to get to the top of the mountain here it's just like i see a future for my life i know uh, you know i have an idea or a concept of where i want to go what i want to do or maybe i don't have the whole thing figured out but i'm putting in the energy to move forward right moving forward moving forward moving forward so couple days left again this really positive energy come the 13th things are really going to change my friends come wednesday mars is going to enter pisces mm, pisces is you know venus loves pisces because venus is what you love and you desire you know and what you love and desire you're connecting with your dreams and your imagination and limitlessness okay when you have that limitlessness you know this is it's falling in love with life and every moment and all of you know this really really beautiful connection mars entering pisces is a little bit more challenging okay kind of like mercury in pisces now, again we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth on uh tuesday wednesday all right, so it's enjoying these next couple of days here of this energy, enjoying this Monday energy for exactly what it is. You know, if communication has been stiff and not really flowing, okay, that's going to most likely change. All right, now let's come back up here to Mother Moon. Mother Moon, Mother Moon. All right, connecting today with Pluto. Oh, oh. Again, depending where you're at. It's like it's not going to hit this stuff until late at night slash early in the morning. Okay, so again, depending where you're at, it's going to start to conjunct Pluto, conjunct Jupiter, and conjunct Saturn. Okay, I'll just show you. Because we're going to be feeling this all day Monday. Now that's 7 a.m. So we're going to feel this Monday night into Tuesday morning. So what, what are these things that we're feeling coming up on Monday that are going to lead into Tuesday? This is, I need to make the changes in my life. I need to create the space to make these changes. Okay. We have, let me come back just a couple hours here. We have the moon trine to the sun. Okay. It's positive flow of energy. And then it's going to start to pick up here, okay, when it connects with Pluto. Now we've got the moon creating that septile to Uranus, the moon's septile to the north node, saying, I need to communicate. I need to share knowledge. I need to seek knowledge. I need great change. I need to do something different. You know, what is that again, that Einstein quote, by doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is insanity. Okay, this is saying I need to switch up what I'm doing on a practical level in order to create the space to create the change in my life. Okay, very, very powerful. So we're going to be feeling this throughout Monday and it's going to hit us really hard on Tuesday. Okay, I'll come forward a couple hours here. So it's, yeah, not till noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, hey, three o'clock. 3 o'clock rock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock rock. You know, that the, the moon's finally going to meet up with, with Saturn here. So either way, we have a sense of creating change in our lives, creating abundance in our lives. Abundance from what? Abundance of scarcity. You know, all the fame and all the riches in the world won't buy you inner peace. Okay, the dream job that you want won't buy you inner peace. The dream relationship that you want won't buy you inner peace. That comes from within. This is the work that we're focused on right now is our personal inner peace. How, what are we doing to move forward that's going to create the peace in my personal life that now I can share with other people, right? to be a little bit less of a roller coaster. Or, you know, it's about, you know, we're always gonna be the ebbs and flows. We're always gonna have the roller coaster. But it's how big are those waves? Okay, how big are those waves? What we wanna do here is, is raise the bar, our personal bar, so that the waves are a little bit 
less. So when we get knocked on tilt or triggered or whatever it is, we're not sinking way down and then taking a long time to come back up and then back up and then back up and then get knocked down again. You know, the higher that we raise our personal inner peace bar, <laughs> okay, then while we're living our lives, the less we get knocked way, 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 way down. Okay, so this is the goal. This is the focus globally, globally, through May, through June, into July. Okay, we're trying to create inner peace, inner stability, stability with great change, um, peace during chaos, peace in great change. And further, remember who we are and add our light during this process, you know. So we've got a good, a good couple of, I don't even want to say a good day, a good couple of days. We have a good couple of months ahead of us, okay? Now, I know that we're all dealing with different things. There's a lot of energy that's, that has kept us very up and down on this roller coaster right now. Uh, I'm not saying that that energy itself is going to change, but we are going to change and how we perceive that energy is going to shift. Our perspective is going to shift. How we feel about it is going to shift in a very positive and a beautiful opening and welcoming way, right? So my friends, have a happy, practical Monday, allowing ourselves to open and create the space that we need to create the change, to create the transformation in our lives, to have inner peace, self-worth, value, Okay, and whatever it is, we're getting it done. You know, we're talking about the moon and Capricorn here. Our need is to focus on the finish line. Let me let me say one thing about that real quick. All right. If the objectivity, let's look at an archer, bow and arrow contest. Okay. This is this is good. This is this is this is fun that this kind of came up at the end here. This is really good. So, uh, a, a bow and arrow archer. Okay. And someone who's consistent, 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 consistent at hitting the bullseye, hitting the bullseye, hitting the bullseye, hitting the bullseye. One, this takes practice, okay? Capricorn, all this earth energy, this is practice. This is that daily practice we've been talking about since the end of last year, maybe even all of last year, all right? With all of this Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter up in Capricorn, right? These, these small incremental daily changes, just creating little bits of, uh, uh, you know, practice, just practice, practice, practice every little day, every day, a little bit at a time, okay? So the, the more that we practice, the more that that arrow continues to find the bullseye. Now, this is where we get put on the roller coaster. This is where we get put on tilt. When we are focused on the bullseye, which in as much as we practice becomes routine, it's, it's a normal thing. Line up, aim for the bullseye, hit it, okay? Now, when we get into competition, okay, and the reward, okay, the reward for the winning is a piece of paper. It says you did it, great job, you've been awarded, you're the best archer, you know, way to go Robin Hood. Um, we find ourselves still maintaining our focus, our inner peace to hit the bullseye, okay? Now, when the reward is a chest full of gold, the archer shoots as if he was blind, okay? Why is that? Because we're not focused, again, hitting the bullseye is easy. What we've done in this particular case, and this is, this is why I'm bringing this up right now, is we're focusing on the outcome instead of the objective itself. Okay, so the outcome, who cares about a, you know, a little certificate piece of paper? I did, you know, I'm going to hang it on my fridge. Look, mom, you know, this gold. Oh, that's worth some, that's worth something. I can, what can, I can buy a new bow and arrow with this, or I can, you know, survive and do this. So this, so the reward for this becomes greater and more challenging to achieve than the objective itself, which is just hitting the bullseye, which is something I practice doing all the time. Not me, I'm not an archer. This is just an example. Anyway, this is something I practice all the time. It's no problem for me to hit that bullseye, but once my mind gets fixated, not on the objective, but on the outcome, the result, okay, that's when I start to teeter. 
So with all of this practical earth energy right now, what's leading up into this is saying like, yeah, we have to one foot on top of the mountain as we move, okay? But we have to stay focused on that, just placing each foot going up the mountain, not the objective of what's going to be there, you know, what's the outcome of going to the party? Is it, you know, what's the outcome of doing this work? What's the, you know, because then if we fail, we're, we're, we're more upset with ourselves. And again, our roller coaster goes down, you know. So it's about letting go of, of the the reward and staying focused on our mission our path our purpose you know and it's just like with this practice that we've been putting in lining up and hitting that bullseye is not going to be a problem okay so take aim my friends <laughs> it's a beautiful time beautiful energy coming your way thank you so much as always we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>